All right. Um, this video will introduce you to the terrain analysis tool set, mostly these top three tools here um, for QGIS. And terrain analysis all kind of, they all derive from this concept of the digital elevation model. And the DEM, which is kind of the shortened way to say that, is an image in which um, every value in the image just represents an elevation value. So kind of unlike the way we were dealing with this main land cover data set, um, this is a raster, right? We might zoom in and we'll see, yep, there are the pixels, the actual pixels. Um, the values in this integer raster um, are integers and they represent a name. This is nominal data. Every number is a category. Um, for instance, it, it appears that 10 means some kind of woodland and um, 16 is some type of impervious surface probably for this road, right? So moving away from this integer raster, um, we're going to start looking at continuous rasters. And this continuous raster uses color, but kind of in a different way. Instead of the way um, the ocean was blue on that previous integer raster, here the ocean is zero because um, the elevation model is measuring height from sea level, from a vertical, what we say is a vertical datum. Um, so if we click along here, we're going to see, huh, interesting. We don't really have integers anymore. We have what's called um, a float or a real number. And that means that there can be a decimal. So there are a couple of different things that we can very easily get from this type of raster data set. And one of them is a hill shade. Um, our eyes don't really look at a digital elevation model and think, hmm, this looks like mountains, right? We look at this and we think, that's kind of an, oh, I can see Mount Desert Island, cool. Um, then we might start to be like, okay, that's Cadillac and that kind of thing. But to us, it looks bubbly. It doesn't really appear like a landscape. So there's a tool up in the raster data set called, um, it's called Hillshade. And what it does is it, it pretends to cast light over this surface from a specific direction and angle. And when you cast light on a three-dimensional surface, you get shadows. And so those shadows are, are to help us understand um, that this is, a, this is terrain, that it's three-dimensional. So you go up to raster, go to terrain analysis, and go to Hillshade. It says, okay, elevation later, DEM, output layer. I'm going to put in my week two data folder, and I'm going to call this um, Hillshade 1, because sometimes we make more than one if it doesn't look good. It's going to be a geotiff, and it says z-factor, and we wonder what does z-factor mean? Well, z-factor means what is the difference between the horizontal units and the vertical units? The horizontal units are map units, and I know those to be meters. Um, and the z-factor is also in meters, so it's one-to-one. -one. Um, if our vertical units were in feet, we'd have to type in a conversion here so that we didn't get a very flat or very exaggerated hillshade. Um, it's great if you can just leave it one to one. That's a nice, a nice thing to, to have go on. Illumination. You can choose which direction, kind of the horizontal angle, that you want the sun to come from. Zero and 360 both mean due north. 180 means south in the degree scale. 90 being east, 270 being west. In general, people like kind of um, somewhere between northwest and west northwest, and that's that's the di the direction that people typically enjoy. Um, I don't know why it's one of these things that there are different theories, but you know it makes it look like mountains instead of um, little pockets. You can experiment; it's fun to experiment. Vertical angle means how far off the horizon, right? Noon at the equator would be ninety, whereas um, in this case. 45 means halfway between 0, which is the horizon, and 90. And yeah, so somewhere between probably 40 and 50 would be good. Um, the higher you go, the more relief you're going to get. So go ahead and run the tool, and it's going to take a couple seconds. And voila, there you are. And it might look a little confusing because, you know, it just looks like a ruffled piece of tinfoil. It's not actually that attractive at the moment.
Well, we're going to play around with different ways to represent terrain, but for now, just know that this does kind of look more, um, I hope you think it does, this looks more convincingly three-dimensional than, for instance, this does, right? So we've got a hill shade, and the next tool we have is called slope, and this is, this um, should be pretty obvious, this is how steep is the pitch. So uh, we might zoom in here, and we can recognize because we're human that this slope right here is not as steep as this very white slope is right there. Um, so slope is a is a raster way of represent of representing the percent. Oh, sorry, the degrees that the that the slope is. So go ahead and run the slope. I'm gonna call this one slope. Z factor is one, very important with slope. You say, okay. Um, this is very useful if we want to know where the steepest and the shallowest grades and gradients are. This is a great tool. Um, and if we were to take our identify tool now, we can see that we've got degrees of slope instead of elevation values. All right. The next one we're going to look at is aspect, and aspect is um, kind of a radial measurement of the angle that a slope is facing. Um, this might be very useful for building plans or that kind of thing. Where where is there more sun exposure? Um, you know, you can you can tell where the south facing, north facing, east and west facing slopes are, and it and it measures from zero, which is north, to you know through south at 180, back to north at at 360, where 90 is east and 270 is west. So we run up here, we say, let's run the aspect raster, and our input is still the DEM. The output is going to be aspect. And Z factor is still one, and say OK. And it, it kind of just looks like a messed up hill shade. And it's, and it's a little troubling because it goes from black, which is almost north, these values are not the max and min, right? The max is, is 360 and the min is, three, is zero on that radial uh, 360 scale. But it's just using black through gray at 50% being south back to north at white. So I'm going to change this, this symbology here and go to properties. And I've made a special single band pseudo color um, aspect color scheme. And the aspect color scheme has red, it goes from red through all of the kind of spectrum back to red. So if I say OK, we're going to see kind of a crazy, there we go. Now this is still pretty confusing, but now at least you can see, ah, all of the orange and yellows are kind of easterly. The south is green, the west is purple, and red is north. So I don't expect you to know um, exactly how to use this at the moment, but it's just kind of a cool thing that you can do. Um, great, so those are the three that we're going to be using today, and um, in the next video I want you to take a look at how to use the raster calculator, because it's a pretty powerful tool.